What's going on, everybody? My name is Jamison West, and welcome to week two of the pregame show. In this episode, we have Colton Clem with Coach Medlock, Benjamin's Breakdown, and Nate Barth with Wyatt Metcalf. First, let's go to Cole Miller with Carson Pazanka. Thanks, Jamison. I'm here with East Central strong safety Carson Pazanka. Carson, this is your final shot at Harrison. How do you feel for this game? Uh, I feel great. Uh, I think we're going to do very well on both sides of the ball, and we've had a lot of preparation for this game, so I think we're going to do really good. Uh, our defense requires a lot of flexibility from you. Uh, what kind of preparations do you have to make, and is there any extra preparations that you have to make? Um, you just got to hit the weight room during the week, and then uh, make sure you hydrate a lot, and just keep your mind focused on the game. And then how's your recruiting process going? Have uh, you made a decision on where you want to go yet? It's going well. I made a decision yet, but I'm looking at a lot of schools, so I'll probably make my decision here in a couple months. How many schools do you have? Um, I don't really know. It, it just, it, it'll keep going up from here, so you can only tell. Well, thank you, Carson, for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Cole. Now, Wyatt, being a starter this year, there's a lot expected of you. How does being a starter impact your role in this very important rivalry game? Yeah, so obviously this year, um, I am a starter this year, and that following the the uh, great legacy of the No Schneider and the O line of last year and the success, um, there's a lot of things that we had to change this year. A lot of stuff that uh, we moved our right tackle to left tackle, put me at right tackle, and obviously the injury of uh, Noah Brown has hurt us. But uh, we had someone, uh, Sam Kramer, he moved over from center. I, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, so, since both rosters have had a lot of changes due to graduating seniors, how does this affect your strategy in the first away game of the season? Yeah, so obviously last year, again, we had a lot of success in the run game uh, with Josh Ringer. Um, this year, I think we're going to have to be more versatile, keep our playbook open. Um, I, I think trick plays, they're not out of the question, but I think smash mouth football is going to have to be played Friday. Absolutely. So um, I've heard that at the senior dinner you crushed 18 chicken tenders and five pieces of bread at Cane's. Do you have any comments on that? I know you're watching Wyatt Smith, okay? No, I don't have any comments. Thanks, Nate. Now to this week's keys of the game against the Harrison Wildcats here in week two. We have two keys to the game. The first one, sense of urgency. You have to start fast this week against Lawrenceburg. Took them about a quarter and a half to get going. Also, control your emotions. You're on the road, rivalry game. You have to stay positive through the adversity and through the good times for your team to be successful. Now, let's take a look at the defense last week against the Lawrenceburg Tigers. And on this first play, we're going to pause and pull up and talk about the execution for Lawrenceburg and then East Central. We have three receivers to the field side, okay, and Carson Bizonka right here splitting the difference between the number two and number three receiver. He's taught that because third and long, you won't have to bring another defender out, okay, and you split the difference. You have corner help and you have safety help over the top, all right, and this is going to be a running play. They're going to try to get a couple yards for the punter to be able to flip the field here a little bit, but Carson realizes it right away. Number 15 can't get there, takes a bad angle to get a block on him. He comes in the backfield. It's a loss for the Tigers. And as you can see here, Carson's helmet, you watch it. He goes back and forth, back and forth. And once he realizes the ball is pitched to the running back, he is a straight and arrow right to the running back for a loss for the Tigers. On this next play, Connor, or excuse me, Alex Kuhn, inside linebacker, number 40, goes untouched. He's right here on the field side. They are going to pull the left guard and the halfback fullback position there on the wing on the boundary side. He's going to go unblocked, and he's going to make a tackle right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard deep. As you see the play develop, no one touches him. Number 22 goes right past him into the corner, try to make a block, but Connor, excuse me, Alex is right there to make the play. We're going to watch it in slow motion again here, and you see Alex be able to read the defense. Uh, appropriately for his teammates, but then also find that running back coming to the field side. Makes a great play, solo tackle for Alex. Nice job defense. Now let's talk about the offense last week against the Tigers. And we're going to pause and talk about the play sequence that we're going to see here, which involves the two-minute offense, okay? 
First off, they get the ball at midfield. A play prior to this here, they get Lawrenceburg offside, so now they're first and five already uh, in their territory. And we have a formation that we're going to see here in just a second again. But we're going to talk about it right now. We have trips to the field side and then Ryan Mingus on the boundary side of quarterback Nolan Maple. It's going to be a read play here for the backfield. And big play, big play for the offense. You're going to see the clock in the top right corner as we go through this sequence of plays. He gets upfield between the 25 and 30. Clock stops until the ball is set. And we're going to pause and talk about this play. This is play number three. So every play has been positive for the Trojans in this two-minute offense. We have trips to the field side again. This time, Ryan Mingus is on the field side. They're going to run a quick rollout. Ryan's going to lead block. Ethan Feldkamp's going to come up, do a comeback. Nolan Maple's going to toss it to him. I would prefer the pass be to the outside, but he throws it inside a little bit, catches the ball, gets upfield. That's most important. Clock's still running. It's second and two, second and one. We're going to pause and talk about this play. This is trips to the field side again. So we have one, two, three. This time, Ryan Mingus is now boundary side, just like two plays prior. Well, when something works, you always come back to it. Hand off, great block by Ethan upfield. Gets in the end zone for a touchdown right before halftime. 45 second, two minute drill for the Trojans. They do a nice job of executing. Now to Colton for his interview. Mr. Medlock, since you've attended East Central and played during your academic years and now you're in your coaching years, what was the best rivalry you had during your performing years and then in your you know, coaching career? I would say that during my actually playing years, I would say that two different rivalry games come to mind. One, um, Harrison, I actually um, was on the field uh, sophomore year and Coach Miners was quarterback and um, looking over and seeing him actually call the snap count from being about three people away, I couldn't even hear him and he was screaming and so being that loud, I could, that kind of is a memory that sticks to my mind and also um, Evansville Wrights, uh, I believe it was junior and senior year, I had to go down there twice back to back years and end up losing against a really, really tough team. And, and in reality, a really, really tough players when they actually went on to college. And then probably actually as a, um, as a from a coaching perspective, uh, rivalry games. And Harrison is always a good rivalry game, but definitely in the first couple years I started, Mooresville actually was pretty tough competition the first couple years. It seemed like kind of like a little stepping stone, like if we wanted to make that next move uh, to become a better team that we need to actually beat Mooresville. And eventually we did. But um, And then more recently, actually, it seems like it was um, – uh, Evansville because every time we would have to end up going down there um, and trying to over accomplish or uh, beat them actually in the long run. Do you remember what years those earlier games that you were playing date back to? Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> like s seven, eight, nine, or oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, or oh oh eight, oh nine, oh ten, or two thousand ten. But yeah, somewhere around there, I believe. Yeah, that's around when I was born. Right. So because your game is on the road, you may have some inexperienced players. What do you do when you travel? What advice do you give them to prepare them for a game? I think that um, explaining the schedule of events and how we're going to actually work days in advance of what, what's going to happen, what time we actually go down there, what it's going to look like when you actually go down there, where we're going to prepare, um, and the steps to actually begin to getting on the field, um, what those look like as well, well in advance. So that way they have a mental understanding, and that way when they're getting down there, it's more of a uh, muscle memory type thing because they can actually remember back in their back in their brain earlier in the week that this is what coach had already explained and this is what we're doing. So there's no second guessing once they get down there. Just like clockwork? Oh, yeah. Muscle memory, clockwork, yeah. Just, ju just for these younger guys, teaching them at actually at a young age what to do, and then eventually once they do experience this first away game, then they kind of know what to expect. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for answering all these questions in this interview. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to follow us on all of our socials. Have a great rest of your day.